We made it. Welcome to this episode of Tending with Tyler, guys. It's been a while. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've been down and out with a back injury. I am finally on the mend. So I know it's been quite some time since my last episode, but I just couldn't wait any longer. I had to get out here. Got a bit of snow. The temperature is right around the minus 10. It is a perfect time to go winter camping. Luckily, because it makes it easier on me, I could get the car in here. There were a couple spots back there where we're a bit slippery. The Mazda doesn't really like sugary snow. Deep snow, like I could drive through three feet of snow, no problem. As soon as it starts getting frozen and sugary, hills become a bit of a problem. But anyway, I have got some new and exciting gear to test out this trip. Got some cool stuff. Let's get on and get it set up. It's about two in the afternoon now. It gets dark about five, so let's get this new tent up and uh, get some firewood and get ready to settle in for a beautifully quiet night. So tonight, guys, we will be staying in the One Tigress hammock hot tent. Now, this is a wall-style tent. I've never owned a wall-style tent. I've always camped with TP. Now, this season, I wanted to try this out uh, just so me and my girlfriend, Nicole, will have a, a lot more room to set up some chairs and a table and be a lot more comfortable with two of us. You can fit two in a TP, no problem. It just gets a bit tight when you get chairs and tables and everything. So this is a much larger option. I also got this because it only comes in at seven pounds, which is nothing. When you compare it to my canvas tent, which is right around the 25 pound mark, pulling this in in a sled is gonna be much, much more enjoyable than a 25 pound canvas tent. Without further ado, I haven't unpacked this yet. I haven't not set it up. We are gonna slap it up. And uh, to do that, bear with me one second. Now to do that, I purchased these poles. Now this tent is designed to go between two trees, but you can also pitch it with poles. So these poles, instead of buying rhino poles, which are right around $100 a pair, which seems a bit pricey, I found these guys on Amazon and they are $45 for the pair. So they're telescoping. You can adjust up to seven feet tall I like that they've got these rubber tips on the end. So even if I use these to, to pitch a tarp in the summer, this will protect it. I don't have to worry about you know, putting a sock on my pole or getting a stick. Uh, and you can pop them off to go through grommets, which is really nice. Anyway, we've got two of these. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to try and get this thing up and we'll see how long it takes me. All right, guys, we're going to call this good. I've been fussing with it for a while, trying to get that perfect pitch. Sometimes it is just not worth it. I'm going to bring you in and show you inside real quick, and then we are going to get out immediately and get some firewood because we are running out of daylight pretty quick, and I would love to have a nice, cozy fire tonight. Groupie, we're just going to call it good. You know, it's going to be a matter of being able to get those ridges level so then you can pull it out tight and it makes everything parallel and good. We're on a slope 
you know, it's my first time pitching, so it's going to be a little off. Uh, we're not going to worry about it too much. Not in for any nasty weather tonight, just cold. So we're going to get the stove going. I'm going to set it up. We're going to go get some firewood. I'm going to show you another new piece of gear I have that I'm super excited about. But uh, yeah, let's get the stove set up. Let's, uh, let's get some firewood. Now, as for dimensions for this thing, you're looking at 6.2 feet wide at the base. 10 feet long you're 3.2 feet tall to where this wall breaks and you are 12 feet on the ridge the ridge is extended a bit so it's a fair size it it feels a little smaller than i expected that's probably because it's not pitched quite right after we get set up in here i might go out pull some guy lines uh and see if we can get it a little more taut but we should be okay Now we're using the uh, Kamali Dweller again. I'm still testing it out. Unfortunately, it's still giving me problems, but I really like the design of the stove. So I've been just kind of ignoring it. Right, guys I'm gonna get a fire going in here before uh, we set up everything now I'm gonna take you along with me to go get some wood because we are testing out <laughs> a Zeke saw so I picked this up from Amazon for 50 bucks so it weighs just over two pounds so it's actually really light considering what it is uh, it's got a six inch chain on it. It comes with two batteries, a charger and a spare chain. So it comes with two chains. Um, I've seen some great reviews. I have seen some terrible reviews. So we're gonna go cut up a bunch of firewood for tonight and I'm gonna let you know what I think of this. But for 50 bucks, if this even works half as well as I'm hoping it will, I will be impressed and it will be a buy well worth the money so let's go give it a shot all right guys i just dragged this uh, piece of maple out of the bush it is petrified so this will be a good test for the saw we're gonna buck it up and see how well it does That's not half bad. That's a lot easier than hands on.
Now, one thing I do immediately notice in this tent is there's nothing to hang things off of. Now, that means what I'll have to do is open these top zippers down a bit and run a ridge line from pole to pole on the outside just so I have a spot to hang things like, you know, my lantern, my fans, that sort of thing. Oh! Now the footprint is definitely bigger than my one tigress north gaze, but this actually feels smaller. Now I think it's because the top of the ridge isn't quite as high as I expected. Now I could get another probably 10 inches of height out of this if everything was pulled out correctly and tight. Even then, it still feels smaller, which is odd, but it's still a decent sized tent. Now, on the website, it claims that you can fit two cots and a hammock, which I suppose you could, having one cot on either exterior wall and the hammock running down the middle, but that would definitely be very tight and uncomfortable. I like that the stove is in the corner of the tent and not so much in the middle or taking up too much space. That will make it much nicer for, you know, livability inside the tent. All right, guys. Cheers to health, everyone. I hope you all have a great holiday season this year, that you get to spend it with all your loved ones. I know I'm going out to my sister's Christmas Eve to have some games and drinks, maybe play some darts. It's going to be a lot of fun. Then Boxing Day, I am off to Nicole's down south, so a bit of traveling for me, but it's always great to spend your time with your loved ones. Oh yeah. So I am using a new camera now. Um, I know a lot of you had said that you were having audio problems with my other videos. So I went out, I got a new camera. Hopefully that solves the audio issues. If not, please let me know. Um, I might have to end up going and buying an expensive camera if this doesn't solve the issue. But yeah, feel free to let me know what you think about the audio. I would really appreciate your feedback. Let's make it a little more homey in here, shall we? For now, I'm going to probably set my cot up in that corner. As it gets closer to bedtime, I will actually move the cot over here because I don't like getting out of bed to have to load the stove. So I'll do a seating area here. Then when it's bedtime, move the cot over, put the seating area over in the corner. And uh, that way I can just wake up, grab a couple logs, toss them in the fire, don't have to get out of the sleeping bag, don't have to stumble around. We just... Easy peasy.
Now you guys have heard me rave over and over about this table, and I'm just going to say once more how much I love this table. All the problems I've had in the past with this stove, it is super nice to see that full door of flame. It just gives you such a homey feel. It almost makes it worth all the heartache I've gone through using this thing. That is a precarious pan. Now, I'm still going to be careful tonight. Um, I will keep all my dishes, my food in the car. Now, it is December 22nd today. Uh, this time of year, normally the bears in the area are hibernating. But it has been so mild. Crazy mild. Like, last week we were looking at plus 5, plus 7. So, when it got warm weather like that, pushing late into the season it's not surprising to find bears not in hibernation so i will definitely be safe put them in the car i i won't have a problem knock on wood but you can never be too careful you might as well be as careful as possible especially when you're alone right I mean, the nearest hospital to me is easily an hour away. So anything went super wrong, you're in trouble. Mmm. Well, guys, I'm going to take a few minutes here to answer some of your questions. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking me what kind of tent I prefer, nylon or canvas, and which is better. Now, unfortunately, for me personally, the answer isn't as simple as A or B. Now, they both have positives and negatives for sure. So, for instance, nylon is very inexpensive. So you can get a fairly large size nylon tent for not a lot of money. Uh, they are very lightweight in comparison to canvas. And uh, they're easier to care for. So canvas, on the other hand, um, much more sturdy, very fire resistant. So you'll find sparks and embers do not burn through. And condensation is not an issue in a canvas tent. Now, I prefer to use canvas when I can. 
something about the sturdy canvas just appeals to me. Now nylon, you know, this tent after a couple trips is going to have, you know, some ember holes in the top. It, it definitely will not last as long as my canvas tent. But again, the canvas tent was much more expensive and weighs right around 25 pounds. So it's not something I would backpack in. You do not want to backpack into the woods with a canvas tent. You would like a nylon tent. So for instance, this is seven pounds, like I said, it's a lot nicer than 25 pounds. Uh, canvas, I do find, does retain heat a bit better. Um, that could just be me blowing smoke up your butts, but personally, I feel like it does. Now, the science behind it really isn't concrete because you have to think they're both super thin material and you can only have an R value of so much in such a thin material. So, yeah, I, I would say I prefer canvas. If I was going to invest my money into a tent that I would like to have for a long time, it would be canvas. But if I planned on doing long distance trips a lot more often, it would be nylon. Now, if you're just getting into hot tenting and you're not sure which route to go, I would recommend a nylon just because they are inexpensive and there are tons of them on the market tons and tons um and there's there's you don't have to take care of them i mean you should you should but i have thrown my sopping wet hot tents in my closet not even cared wet put them away forgot about them till next season pulled them back out and they're perfectly fine now you can't really do that with canvas um newer canvas like the one i have it is is woven with something else i can't remember what it is but that does help resist mold and mildew now if you put a canvas tent away wet odds are when you pull it back out you're gonna have mold on it so you do have to you know come back from your trip hang it up dry it out fold it back up put it away which you should be doing with your nylon tents anyway but if you're not diligent or one night you were just so blown, you just screw it, I'm not putting my tent away, and then you just forget about it, you might get in trouble. So there is that. So nylon's easier to take care of, you know, and you can you can pick one up for under two hundred dollars if you shop around and look for deals on Amazon. Like I said, this is full price at two hundred and thirty dollars. Which really is nothing if you get into an esker or any of the higher brand canvas tents you're you're well into the thousands the cheapest one i've ever found is my one tigress north gaze and that's 415 dollars, which is a lot to spend on a tent when you you're not sure you're really going to enjoy it you might buy everything and head out and just realize it is not your cup of tea and that money's wasted so yeah, a bit of a complicated answer to your questions, but that's just the way life is. There's never an easy answer. Anyway, guys, I'm going to finish this beer up. Go grab my sleeping bag and crawl into bed. I might curl up and maybe watch some Frasier on Prime. I saw that the new Fraser came out, so I've been trying to work my way through the older ones. I think I'm on season eight now. There's 11 seasons, believe it or not. Crazy. Watch a couple episodes and just fall asleep. But uh, I will bring you guys back in the morning for some coffee, and we'll see what the condensation looks like in this tent. Because I can already start feeling quite a bit of moisture build up towards the bottoms. But anyway, good night, guys. We'll see you in the morning. There was not a sound out there last night. Which is surprising because there's actually quite a lot of coyote tracks out there. So I was hoping they might get some yipping last night, but not a sound. Okay though, I slept pretty pretty good.
Now, of course, I forgot my camping mug. <laughs> Luckily, I had my coffee from work this morning. Well, yesterday morning. In my car, so... Just have to be careful I don't break it. Oh yeah, just what the doctor ordered. Oh, well guys, I'm going to finish this coffee and pack this place up as quickly as I can and get out of here before the weather turns nasty. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a blast. I know it's been a while. I'm glad to be getting back out here and camping again. So I promise it will not be as long in my next camping video, which is, of course, going to be another winter camping video. Now, what I might do is I still want to go out and build a winter shelter and stay in that for a night. Maybe try and incorporate my little solo stove and do some type of chimney, be it a probably a teepee with an open top and have a little wood stove in my shelter, but... That's coming this season. Not sure if it's going to be next trip, but it's definitely, definitely soon. So keep tuned. Uh, whack the like or subscribe button. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for my next video.